Welcome to another episode of the Understanding Crypto series by Thomas Plunkett. Today, we're going to take a look at some more information about the Ethereum virtual machine or the EVM. This uh, slide deck and these videos are available in our Creative Commons license. So let's take a look um, at the heart of you know ethereum is the ethereum virtual machine so we'll talk about what is the ethereum virtual machine then we're going to dive into the ethereum virtual machine instruction set we'll talk a bit about ethereum state and how uh, smart contracts work as bytecode and finally we'll close with um, some discussions about gas and how gas works so at the heart of the Ethereum protocol and operation is the Ethereum virtual machine or EVM for short uh, in its abbreviated form. You know, as you can guess from the name, it's a computation engine, not dissimilar to a Java virtual machine or the virtual machine that's used by Microsoft.net or other uh, bytecode compiled programming languages. So we're going to take a detailed look at the EVM, including its instruction set, its structure, its operation within the context of Ethereum state updates. So the EVM is part of Ethereum that handles smart contract deployment execution. Uh, you know, simple value transfer transactions from one wallet to another don't need to involve the EVM, but everything else that involves a state update, uh, you know, where you're calling a contract is actually computed by the Ethereum virtual machine. And you can think of it as the EVM running on the Ethereum Burp blockchain is this sort of global decentralized computer containing millions of executable objects, each with its own permanent data store. Now, we talk about the fact that uh, Ethereum, Ethereum supports Turing completeness. Well, really, um, the EVM is a quasi Turing complete state machine. We say quasi because all execution processes are limited by gas to a finite number of computational steps by the amount of gas available for that particular smart contract execution. As such, uh, the theoretical halting problem is solved in that all program executions will halt. There can't be an infinite loop because you'll run out of gas before you could run infinitely. So the situation where execution might accidentally or maliciously run forever uh, is avoided and therefore uh, we don't have to worry about the Ethereum platform uh, being trapped in an infinite loop. So the Ethereum virtual machine has a stack based architecture storing all in memory values on a stack. Uh, it works with, you know, stacks are these uh, last in first out data structures. Uh, it works with a word size of 256 bits uh, to facilitate native hashing and elliptic curve operations and has several addressable data components. It's got an immutable program read-only memory loaded with the bytecode of the smart contract to be executed. It's got a volatile memory with every location initially initialized to zero. And it's got a permanent storage that's part of the Ethereum state, also initialized to zero. And there's a set of environmental variables and data that's available during execution, uh, which we'll go through in a subsequent lecture. So here's a look at our Ethereum virtual machine architecture. So over on the left side, you can see the account state um, and the block header inside of block number whatever on the blockchain. And down below that, We've got our EVM world state and our EVM global namespace of variables and units. Um, then to the right side, we've got, and by the way, this little graph over here on the right could be placed underneath here. Um, so we've got our existing state and our transaction data. Um, and uh, we have a transaction caller who's calling in. And, you know, and it goes into the EVM state over here. You can see the storage, the arguments, the program counter, stack and memory and so on. And you can see how the processing works uh, in these uh, state machine cycle for bytecode operations. I mean, this is a really complicated diagram. 
um, you know, because we've got a lot of details in here. Um, but basically, if you read through this slowly, it kind of makes sense. You know, if you look at that diagram on the left, that's kind of describing what's going on in a particular block. If we look at this on the right, it's showing us what the state is on the EVM during that particular block. And then we can see when a transaction comes in, how that transaction is sending information in and manipulating the state. So the term virtual machine is often applied to the virtualization of a real computer, like well, cloud systems, where a software abstraction uh, emulates hardware and OS functions. Um, the Ethereum virtual machine is a lot more limited than that. It is not a true virtualization platform where we're virtualizing away the OS and the computation and the hardware and everything else. Instead, the EVM is just a computation engine and provides an abstraction of computation and storage similar to the Java virtual machine specification. Um, from a high level viewpoint, the JVM is designed to provide a runtime environment that's agnostic of the underlying host operating system or hardware, enabling compatibility across a wide variety of systems. And so that's why Java had the, the slogan, write once, run anywhere. The idea was you didn't have to rewrite your software program, whether you were deploying on Windows or Linux. You could deploy it wherever you, you know, you just wrote it once. And then so long as there was a JVM for that particular hardware platform, they could use your same program. You know, high level programming language like Java and Scala, which uses JVM and C Sharp, which uses .NET, are compiled into the bytecode uh, and then placed on their respective virtual machine, which is then and that VM is actually built specifically for the underlying OS and hardware. So in the same way, the Ethereum virtual machine executes its own bytecode instruction set which higher level smart contract programming languages such as Solidity uh, and some of the other languages like Serpent and so on are compiled into. So the EVM doesn't have a scheduling cap capability because uh, the execution ordering is organized externally to it. Ethereum clients run through block transactions to determine which smart contracts need executing in which order. So in this sense, the Ethereum world computer is single threaded. Uh, neither does the Ethereum virtual machine have any system interface handling or hardware support. There's no physical machine to interface with. The Ethereum world computer is completely virtual. Um, tune in next time, we're going to dive deeper into the Ethereum virtual machine by taking a look at the EVM instruction set.